It's Platt, and today we kick off the holiday season. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So, since the holidays are just around the corner, I thought today we'd kick off the holiday season with a classic, you know, big-bodied winter ale, and that's what we have here today. Uh, with Nice Schaff is the name of the brew. Comes to us from the fine folks at Oshoff Brewing. Uh, a little background into Oshoff. Oshoff is located in Oshoff, Belgium, which is near Luxembourg. Uh, its story dates back to the late 70s when two brother, brother-in-laws, Pierre uh, Gobron and Brett or Chris Briarwort, uh, were homebrewers. They uh, they just uh, start home brewing together and quickly, like a lot of home brewers, wanted to live the dream. Now, apparently, in the time in Europe, it was a lot easier to start a brewery, lower overhead, and I guess regulations. Because in 1982, they opened in August their first their brewery, utilizing only 5,000 francs. Now, I don't know how much it was back then, but let's say it was an even pair to the dollar. Inflation adjusted. We're talking about opening a brewery for fifteen thousand, maybe seventeen thousand dollars. <laughs> it's still some. Uh, I I would love to know how to do that here in the states. Let's put it to you that way. Um, they brewed originally on a forty-nine liter mash tun, which is about twelve U.S. gallons. So they they weren't even making a keg at a time. So it was a very small operation to say the least. Um, Interesting story about the company's logo it dates back to the legend of the Ardennes. The Ardennes is a forest in uh, France, Germany, Belgium, and I think part of Luxembourg in that area. And apparently legend has it there were gnomes living there. And that became the, uh, the mascot for the brewery, the logo. They have uh, four gnomes. Each gnome is, uh, re- is related to a separate beer in their main lineup. There is uh, Marcel, Malcolm, Matthew, and Micheline. So really kind of cool story, you know, a little local lore in there uh, to help sell beers. Who doesn't love gnomes? So definitely uh, worked out. Uh, eventually, after they got started, though, they were able to grow, get some traction. You know, people started, you know, noticing them. And uh, by 1986, they purchased the farm they were brewing on. Apparently, they were renting a barn for a while, probably one of those ag exemption things, which we have a little bit of here in the U.S., but not for $15,000. Anyway, they eventually purchased that farm and were able to grow enough to where both gentlemen were able to leave their day jobs and brew full time. Now, by 1992, things had grown to the point where they were producing about 5,000 hectoliters a year. They eventually brought in a new uh, brew house, which is a 70 hectoliter system. Uh, They eventually started exporting. They really started to uh, flourish. And, of course, that brought in big beer. And in 2006, Duvel Mortgart, the Belgian brewing conglomerate, came in and purchased them. Uh, I believe the gentleman, it was real vague on what I saw on the website. I think they still have some relation with the brand maybe not day-to-day operations but still some relations and luckily nowadays when these big breweries come to buy smaller breweries they generally tend to leave management and the brewer in place so hopefully that's what uh, happened with Oshoff. Uh, real quick let's get into their line of beers small line of beers and we're going to focus on that core four. First is Lushoff 8% ABV uh, Marcel is the known for this particular beer it is a big-bodied blonde ale, almost into that kind of Belgian strong ale style. They sell uh, the bigger balls, the magnums of that particular line, and they call it Big Schaff. Next, we have Mick Schaff, 8% ABV. This is a Scotch ale, Mick Schaff, Scotch ale. Uh, Malcolm is the known for this particular beer. Third, we have Hoblin Schaff, 9% ABV. This is... In their own words, where we're kind of a hopped up or a hop forward Belgian triple style beer, you know, one of those classic, you know, big body Belgian beers. And Matthew is the known for this particular beer. Lastly, we have Cherry Schaff, 8% ABV. This is a cherry flavored ale, and Micheline is the known for that particular beer. Uh, they have other seasonal brews. What we have here, the Nice Schaff, it is their winter ale. They do some other seasonals, but it's pretty much the core four, and then some other seasonals as far as their lineups. They're not doing IPAs or marshmallow porters or anything like that. 
sticking fairly close to Belgian style with not without necessarily being entrapped by the whole Trappist uh, uh, thing. Well, before we try this particular beer, though, let's check out the stats. All right, gang, so for our question for Platt today, and if you have a question that you want me to answer in a video, feel free to send it to plattsboozeblog at gmail.com. Put in the subject line questions for Platt. This one comes today from the Drunken Gunsmith, great name, <laughs> basically asks, will adding more yeast or will adding more yeast increase the alcohol and speed up the fermentation process? The basic answer is no. For standard home brews, like if you're going to brew a blonde ale at home or make wine or cider or something like that, extra yeast is not going to speed up or ramp up the ABV. Um, most yeasts are designed to reach a certain ABV and they can't stand the alcohol. So you could put a pound of that particular yeast in there and it's not going to go over 8% or 10%, whatever it's designed for. Also, too, if you add too much yeast, yeast is like any other animal at the primal level. They mark their territory. And they'll kind of pre excrete some flavor compounds. And if there's too many of them, it's kind of like your front yard. If one dog pees in your front yard, no big deal. 50 of them, you got dead grass. So, it, it, so too much yeast can be a problem as far as flavor goes. And again, it won't necessarily ramp up the ABV. Now, as far as speeding up the process with yeast, the only way you can really do that is do a yeast starter. If I'm going to brew, let's say tomorrow I'm going to brew a blonde ale, I would start the yeast tonight. I would take some malt extract, put my yeast, however much yeast I want for the next day. I would put that with some malt extract, some warm water, you know, but proper pitching temperature. Throw that in. Let that yeast, especially if it's dry yeast, let that yeast have time to kind of rehydrate uh, kind of reanimate and go. Uh, some of the vials of yeast suggest that you do a yeast starter. If you're doing like the slap pack stuff like that, a lot of times you want to get that yeast starter going. That will sometimes save you a day because it's really the first day that that yeast is kind of getting going. You're not really producing a ton of alcohol. So you could save a day with that. Now are there times to add more yeast during fermentation? There's kind of a very, very specific. Um, really high ABV beers, beers that are in the high teens to low 20s, uh, Sam Adams Utopias is probably the prime example of this, a lot of times will do multiple yeast additions. The reason they do this is, let's say you're making like a barley wine and you want to get to 18% or something like that, but you still want those classic kind of ale flavors in it, you would start off with like something like maybe a Nottingham yeast or Edinburgh yeast, a classic pub ale yeast, uh, even like a Safel US05, a standard yeast that might get you eight to 10% ABV, but imparts those classic flavors for that style. Then to get you from 10 to 18, you might come in with a higher gravity yeast, or I think Sam Adams Utopias even uses a champagne yeast to kind of help finish, get those last uh, few percentage of alcohol. But that's about the only time you do it. So anyway, that's the answer to the question. Extra yeast won't make this thing go faster or higher ABV alone. A holiday beer. All right, we're going to do about half that. Oh, my God, that is a deep ruby. That's almost opaque, but through the light, I can get just deep ruby color, uh, almost like a port color-wise color, color -wise, or like a really deep wine. Nice, almost two fingers width of a khaki head oh my gosh you smell a lot of that like uh, dark fruit notes that you get on some of the darker malts uh, there are some spice to this this is this a holiday style beer so a lot of times you'll you'll pick up things like coriander thyme stuff like that let's jump on in Oh my gosh, that's a lot of flavor. Dang, that's good. A lot of body to it. Um, does not drink 10% though. You notice you're, you, you know you're drinking something, a beer, some significance, but you don't get quite the burning. At 10%, that's when 
some people, you know, sometimes say, well, my beer's a little hot or whatever. Not this one, and, you know, it drinks more in the seven to eight range, but uh, man, just what a mouthful of flavor. You're, you're into the darker malts, but we haven't got to the chocolate and the espresso and some of the astringent notes that you get in things like stouts or porters. These are just those deep, toffee, caramel type notes that kind of start getting into things like plums and dates and the darker red fruits. Um, I'm not picking up my in in my research for this i you know and i even sit on the nose you kind of pick up like there's some baking spice or there's almost like a pie filling thing going on in the nose i'm not picking that much up in the palate it's just those like some really deep toffee notes that are married with the deep red fruits but man what a just a mouthful of flavor decent body to this just a perfect kind of holiday beer to have around the, uh, you know, old Yule log. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If, you've, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.